Chairman of the U.S. House Intelligence Committee says reports of Syria's possible use of chemical weapons against its own people is troubling. Representative Mike Rogers is worried the weapons could fall into the wrong hands after President Assad is driven from power. He says the United States needs to worry about the region's stability and U.S. credibility. The problem is, you know, the president has laid down the line. He, you know, it can't be a dotted line. It can't be anything other than a red line. And more than just Syria, Iran is paying attention to this. North Korea is paying attention to this. So I think the options aren't huge, but some action needs to be taken. U.S. officials say Syria probably used chemical weapons twice in March, which Syrian officials deny. President Barack Obama has said use of chemical weapons would cross a red line that would compel the United States to act. Tony Badrin is a uh, research fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies and is on the line from New York. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, what do you think would compel the United States and other nations uh, to act? Well, uh, at, at this point, it seems very little uh, because even the professed uh, red line that uh, President Obama had uh, put forth as the tripwire for uh, American uh, action has proven to be uh, virtually non-existent. I mean, the president has uh, taken the, the road of uh, taking a, a further investigation by the UN, which is essentially where investigations go to die. So I don't think that this actually is going to uh, lead to any action whatsoever. Well, why would the United States be concerned about its credibility in this matter? Well, because uh, very easily the Iranians are going to be watching uh, and the word of the President of the United States has to mean something. When the President of the United States says that uh, if you cross this, this, we, this, uh, this red line will be unacceptable to the United States, and then it is crossed, uh, and then the United States does nothing, then the credibility of the United States is completely finished. Uh, diplomatic action would be in the offing here or, or military action? I'm not sure what uh, avenues there are for diplomatic action in this case, because, I mean, that's essentially what the president is doing. Mm -hmm. By taking this back to the United Nations, uh, essentially he's serving up a, a, a ball for the Russians to veto once again, because the Russians are certainly not going to allow this to pass through the Security Council. So essentially it will be a very easy win for the president to say, look, uh, I've tried to do this, but all oh, those bad, bad Russians have vetoed uh, and blocked diplomatic actions once again, which is a, a very nifty way of kind of dispelling any sense of responsibility for it. Uh, Russia has a lot of experience and a lot of expertise on the uh, weapons front. Could Russia play a role in, in confirming or not whether uh, such chemical weapons were used? Well, that's what the Syrian government wants. They want the Russians uh, to be the ones who are in investigating this issue. But that's, uh, I mean, that's really, that's really not, uh, not an option, I don't think, because when the first investigation, uh, you, will, you will recall that there is an investigation by the UN uh, to go into Syria, but it hasn't been granted access by the Syrian mm -hmm. government. And, and the position of the Russian government on that particular mission is very telling, because uh, the Russians basically wanted of the investigation to see whether the rebels are the ones who did this and not to really use it as a pressure point on the Syrian government. If uh, uh, President Assad has in fact resorted to uh, using chemical weapons, would that suggest that his, his grip on power is slipping? Uh, not, not necessarily uh, in the way we, we might think. I mean, look, his, his military is holding up to a certain extent. What it does show is that uh, he has been incrementally uh, uh, sort of upping the, the type of weapon he's been using since 2011 and 2012. Mm -hmm. It started with artillery shells, then it moved to incendiary and cluster bombs, then to fighter jets, and then to, uh, uh, to um, uh, um, scud missiles and ballistic missiles. And now all of a sudden, you know, we've seen small-scale usage of chemical weapons. So basically he has introduced incrementally uh, um, uh, more sophisticated or more lethal types of weaponry and uh, at each point there was no deterrent from the international community so he pressed on so the more he can do that the more he will use and of course it does serve a purpose tactically for him to use uh, chemical weapons or agents in certain uh, certain instances uh, let's say to get, to get um, as, as a U.S. official uh, uh, said in December of last year, that basically the, the, the practice would lead to effective ethnic cleansing. It's, it's, basically, it's basically linked to uh, moving populations out of uh, particular urban centers that are, uh, let's say, pro-revolution. Uh, and, you know, with, with the scare of a, of a chemical weapons use, they can, they can pre pretty much depopulate a, a, 
uh, a particular urban center. So it has its own its own uses, and now he's seen that he can use it pretty much without any uh, um, uh, any reaction from the international community. A horrible situation continues in Syria. Tony Badrin from the uh, Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thanks.